and below. You are redeemed. Redeemed from sickness. Redeemed from death. Redeemed from sin. By the power of the Holy Ghost. It's your season to win. Take your healing. Take your freedom. Take your favor. I want you to open your mouth this morning and speak up and speak and speak and speak with understanding. Mandoro Boshotayata, Rege Geborose, Erika Barayata, Ebrayata Dayata, Ebrayata, 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 praying always with all spiritual prayers and supplication in the spirit. Egeboza take a lebrayata and watching thereunto. Mande kele brayata with all perseverance. Ege prose de ke proja tayata. E brayata boreya bayata. He says, and for me, make gorobo shotaya. That utterance might be given unto me. Make robo shotayata. That I may open my mouth. Boldly, Ege Boro Sadeata, and open the mouth boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel. Lift your voice this morning as our Papa stands in this place uh, that he will open his mouth boldly this morning. Ege Boro Sadeata, and make known uh, the mystery of the gospel. Ma Araboro Sata, Reke Bora Sataya, E Ripradaya Tahara, Reprado Sateata, E Kapanda Yata, E Kaporo Satayata, E Krapro Satayata. He said, Brethren, when I came unto you, I didn't come with enticing words of a man's wisdom. Me Kaporo Satayata, lift your voice this morning as our purpose stands this morning and preaches the word and teaches the word. Araposa Tayata He speaks and teaches in demonstration of the spirit and power Makorobo Sotaya He said that your faith shall not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God Akaporo Satayata Araparayata Ekraprato Sataya Ekaporo Sataya Aboshataya Rekatara Raporashata Ekaprayata That the whole nations of the world Will receive this gospel this morning Akaprosatayata Ekaporashataya Ekaprosotaya Ekaporashata Emprataya 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 He said by me Talking about our Papa Ekaporosataya By me The preaching might be fully known and that the Gentiles might hear this morning we are saying that the whole world might hear all nations of the world will receive this gospel this morning Makaporo Shataya Ekrapranda Yata Ekaporo Shataya Brekapora Ebradosa 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 The nations of the earth are open to this gospel Makoro Bosota Rapraya Ekaposhatayata This gospel
gospel shall be preached unto all nations in Kapora Shatayata. And so we declare this morning the news and credit of the whole world will receive this gospel. That the eyes of understanding of men might be open this morning. That the Kaporosataya, a prayata, 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 a prodasa, 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 a caroba, 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 a caroba. Rakaposataya, Rakaporosatayata, a cratada, a cratadayata, a cratadayata, a cratodayata, 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 a Prosata, era prosata, era prosata, era prosata, era prosata, e pradosata, 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 Sata, e prado 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 sata, e that means as we open they will turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God and they will receive inheritance among them that are sanctified through faith which is in Christ Jesus Raposataya, Raposutaya Rodayata, Eroposuda, 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 that the blessing of the gospel of Christ will fill the whole earth this morning as our Papa is teaching the world. He said, Brother, when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. This morning, as we stand, we declare, as our Papa is teaching, as our Papa is bringing the word, the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ is being distributed. Jesus this morning as the word is preached Makoporo Satayata Rakapo Satayata Rakoropo Satayata and the Lord walking with them confirming the word with miracles with wonders with signs following Makoropo Satayata Rakatayata Ekaporo Satayata as he preaches and teaches the word this morning as he teaches the word this morning Makoporo Satayata Signs, wonders, miracles will follow the word. For where the word of the king is, there is power. Ah, 
This morning, a new program is beginning. And so, Kaparosa Tayata, Rakapasata, we want to stand together this morning and pray. Akapasatayata, Ekapayata, that our Papa be strengthened with might by the Spirit of God in the inner man. Akatayata, Ekaposataya, Ekaporayata. Strengthen with might uh, by his spirit in the inner man. Oh, Shakeda Bayata, Rakato Satayata, Ekapanda Suta, Embrosuta, Embrosuta, Ah, Shatea Nahasataya. Father, we praise your name this morning. Thank you, Father. Lift your hands and wave unto Jesus uh, for answered prayer. Mandoro Boshate Kalabayata, Zela La Lebo Roshenda Yata. Thank you, Father. We praise your name in Jesus name in the name of Jesus let me hear a lively amen hallelujah Papa in the house put your hands together and celebrate his presence with a clap celebrate his presence with a shout somebody shout glory hallelujah good morning Papa you're welcome Ayakaha Ladies and gentlemen, the rabbi is in the house. Ayakadayata. Are you ready for the word? Do you do ayakata? Two hands above your head, put them together. Let's shout as we receive our papa. Doctor, Ibel Damina. Glory. Amen. Praise God. Lift your right hands to heaven. Father, we rejoice that this morning we have access into the deep things of God by the Holy Ghost. Thank you that this morning we speak words which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spirituals with spiritual. Thank you that the eyes of each one's understanding under the sound of my voice is flooded with light, veils fall off, mindsets corrected, strongholds cast down, and we declare that your word gains preeminence over everyone today. We give you praise that the glory of your word fills the earth as the water covers the sea. Nobody lives this service the same way they came. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift those hands. Let's release our feet together. So say these words. I am born of God. I am born of the word. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. And we want to welcome the entire Kwaibom State community listening by way of Comfort FM, XL FM, Radio Akwaibom, Unuyo, Unuyo FM, Heritage FM, Inspiration FM, all of the Akwaibom State community. We want to welcome all of you to the broadcast this morning. You need to call a friend, a family member, somebody you love, ask them to tune to this radio station right now life is flowing through the airwaves our social media community so glad to have all of you family and friends is the beginning of a great time of teaching the whole of this week and we're excited because it's going to be a time of the knowledge of god flooding the earth and so i'd like you to call a friend call a loved one share the video tag somebody create watch parties drop them on all the groups on your page join as many groups as possible put them on monogram telegram and put them on whatsapp groups let's get the word to the ends of the earth and i want to thank you for making it happen this morning and everybody else in our campuses around the world we're so glad to welcome all of you and those connecting to the service for the first time fasting your seat belts i tell you guys it's going to be an adventure in the world of his grace are we excited to be here this morning can we give the lord the greatest shout in this service glory 
Amen. Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible, and you can be seated with your sweet, smart self as we get into the word of God this morning. Mm -mm -mm. We're starting a series this morning on tithe and tithing. And um, mm -mm. It's, it's a series I have been trying not to get into for a while because I wanted to make sure that, um, you know, we're able to get what the timing right for this teaching to get to you. And uh, for us to be able to deal with the subject very, very squarely. So we're looking at understanding tithe and tithing. Bible doctrine on tithe and tithing. We're going to look at the meats, the practice, and the malpractice. The meats, the practice, and the malpractice of tithe on tithing. You will have to pay attention because it's a Bible study. Bible study means we are going to study the Bible. It means we are going to read so many scriptures. And I hope the guy on the computer is conversant with the Bible. Please, that's important, Ernest. Look, look into that because we're going to read so many scriptures. You see, I'm not just teaching you for you to know what Titan is about or what Titan is not about. Even though that is very important. But I'm teaching you so you can teach others. I am teaching you so you can teach others. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse number 15. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse number 15. Brother Paul writes to Timothy and he says to Timothy, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. When you hear the word all scriptures, obviously it is referring to the Old Testament. The Old Testament books, which is Genesis to Malachi. Genesis to Malachi is called all scriptures. In saying that, he says the scriptures, meaning the Old Testament. So you can say all the Old Testament books are profitable for doctrine. All the Old Testament books are profitable for doctrine. The word doctrine means teaching. Teaching or explanation. So, the Old Testament books are profitable for teaching or explanation. Meaning, Genesis to Malachi is only profitable when it is explained. That the profit you get out of Genesis to Malachi will only be available to you when the books are explained. So, we should be able to teach from Genesis to Malachi. Profitable for teaching, the word didaskalon, which means to explain. He says for teaching and in teaching you will find reproof. Reproof. The word reproof is the Greek word elekos. Elekos. E-L-E-G-C-H-O-S. E-L-E-G-C-H-O-S. And he says in teaching apart from reproof, which is actually evidence. Evidence. To give evidence. Reproof. Elekos. It also means to provide, to provide correction. The word correction there is the word ephenatos, ephenatosis, ephenatosis, E-P-A-N-O-R-T-H-O-S-I-S. -E For those making notes, E-P-A-N-O-R-T-H-O-S-I-S, ephenatosis. It means to set things properly the way they ought to be. To set things properly the way they ought to be. The last word there is for instruction in righteousness. The word pedia. Pedia, that is to raise up a child by the way of the mouth. And if you want to write pedia, it's P-A-I-D-E-I-A. P-A-I-D-E-I-A. Pedia. It means for spiritual growth. So when there is teaching of scripture... Out of the teaching of scripture, you will have reproof, which is evidence. You will have correction, which is the resetting of the mind. You will have spiritual growth. So there can be no spiritual growth until the scriptures are explained and they are taught. And of course, you know that we teach scriptures in the light of Christ. Because the Bible is Jesus' book or the Bible is Jesus' material. So what it means is that I can't get spiritual growth in the Old Testament until the Old Testament is explained. 
I cannot get spiritual growth from the Old Testament until the Old Testament is explained. Now, how are they explained? They are explained by virtue of the evidence. By virtue of correction. Then, they are explained by virtue of instruction in righteousness. So, we have a responsibility to explain the Old Testament. We have a responsibility to explain the Old Testament. For example, Jesus' most exhaustive study or Jesus' most exhaustive Bible study is in Luke chapter 24, verse 25 to 27. On the way to Emmaus, when he met Cleopas, and, uh, you know, uh, theologians believe his wife was the second person. And Jesus asked them, what are you guys talking about? And they said to Jesus, are you a visitor in town? And they were talking about the events of the past three days. And Jesus said unto them, O fools, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? So see Jesus' Bible study now. Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures. So Genesis to Malachi, the prophets, the law of Moses is what he called the scriptures the things so when the scriptures are well explained they will arrive at the things concerning himself the things concerning himself interestingly that's the only teaching jesus had that didn't have any documentation we just have a summary but we don't have the details of what he discussed with them we just have a summary of it we only know what he must have taught that he explained himself so what exactly did he say or what exactly did he teach he just said well he spoke about the things concerning himself that bible teaching therefore must be explained from the old testament and we have that responsibility so please pay attention the Bible is a book of words, W-O-R-D, words. The Bible is a book of words. That means words will be found in the Bible, the written word. Words will be found in the Bible. So the words, therefore, will need explanation. Like, what does this word mean? They will need explanation. And if you are concordance for example in acts chapter 5 or if you use the concordance in acts chapter 5 you will find a man called ananias and Sapphira, the couple who died then in acts chapter 9 you will see ananias again but the ananias in chapter 5 is different from the ananias in chapter 9 all right so it's not like ananias was raised from the dead there are two different ananias he is not the same person. It's as simple as that. You will need to pay attention to know that Ananias in Acts chapter 5 is not Ananias in Acts chapter 9. They are two different people. Then you find another person called James. There was a James killed in Acts chapter 12. There was a James killed. Then there is another James in Acts chapter 15. The James in chapter 12 is not the same with the James in chapter 15. It's so simple, you know, because I'm talking about names. But it just shows that you must know that they are different. So when you are studying the word, you must say, so there's a contextual James in chapter 12 and a contextual James in chapter 15. All right. Now, there's a contextual Ananias in chapter 5. And there's a contextual Ananias in chapter 9. For example, you see Jesus use Hebrews chapter 4 verse 8. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 8. <clears throat> Put it up for me. If, for if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? He would not have spoken of another day. The word Jesus there is the word Joshua. The Hebrew word Joshua. For if Joshua, the name Jesus is the, the name Joshua in the Hebrew. All right. Now, there's also another by Jesus. They are not the same. 
but Jesus is not Jesus. Jesus is Joshua in the Hebrew. So what I'm saying is, you cannot take things at face value. Scriptural words must be properly studied, exhaustively studied. What does this word mean are the questions you ask yourself. And what is he saying in context? Because context helps explanation. Context helps explanation. If you're making notes, that's a good one to write. Context helps explanation. It's the context that helps you to know how to apply the word. Not necessarily the grammar. It is the context that helps you to know how to apply the word. Not necessarily the grammar. The grammar may have a different meaning in another context than the other one. The grammar may have a different meaning in the other context than the other one. That's very important. For example, look at this terminology you will find in lots of places. Abraham believed God. Where was the first mention of Abraham believed God? Genesis chapter 15 verse 6. Put it up for me. Genesis chapter 15 verse number 6. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. Everybody says, well, I believe God. All right. Now look at Romans chapter 4 verse 3. Romans chapter 4 verse number 3. For what say of the scripture... Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. He believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. James chapter 2 verse 23. James chapter 2 verse 23. And the scriptures was fulfilled which say it. Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Look at James chapter 2 verse 19. James chapter 2 verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So Abraham believed God and he was righteous. Devils believe God. Are they righteous? But Abraham believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness. The devils also believe God. In fact, they go beyond believing to trembling. So again, that's why scriptures must be carefully studied. You don't take things at face value. All right? Now, so you need to ask, did Abraham just believe that there is God? Because demons also believe that there is God and they tremble. And you need to ask, does it mean that everybody that believes in the existence of God is righteous? That's the way to think and that's the way to look at the scripture. So, what did Abraham believe God for? Because if Abraham believed God exists, demons also believe God exists and tremble. And they are not righteous. So what did Abraham believe? Galatians chapter 3 will help us out. Because for you to know what Abraham believed, you must take all the references. All. You must go to everywhere that the scripture talks about Abraham believing to be able to factor out what distinguishes the believing of Abraham. Are you still here? Now look at Galatians chapter 3 verse 8. Galatians chapter 3 verse 8. And the scripture foreseeing that God will justify the hidden through faith. Preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying in thee shall all nations be blessed blessed how verse 6 of Galatians chapter 3 Galatians chapter 3 verse 6 even as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness what did he believe because even the atheists believe that God exists even the atheists, they say there is no God, but when they're in trouble, they call God without knowing, without even thinking. So somehow, somehow, in their minds somewhere, even though they think God does not exist, they still have, a, you know, that feeling that there must be God somewhere. So 
What did Abraham believe? Again, look at verse 7 and 8 of Galatians chapter 3. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Verse 8. And the scripture foreseeing that God will justify the hidden through faith preached the gospel. So the faith of Abraham was faith in the gospel. Not faith in the existence of God. But you have to put everything together. So now the word preach before the gospel is to say something ahead of time. Before, ahead of time. So you must not jump to conclusion. You must patiently allow scripture interpret itself. So again, what did Abraham believe? He didn't believe in the existence of God. He believed in the gospel. He believed in the gospel as a promise. Today, we believe the gospel as a fulfilled fact. Abraham believed the gospel as a promise. We today believe the gospel as a fulfilled fact. So, you understand the Old Testament does have a way... Its words were put together. That you realize that a couple of things were not made obvious in the Old Testament. A couple of things were not made obvious in the Old Testament. For example, look at Psalms chapter 78 verse 2. And I want you to know we are still teaching on tight and tighting. We are just laying foundation. Okay, I'm sure you are used to my style by now. Okay. Psalms chapter 78 verse number 2. Mm -mm. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. He calls it dark sayings. The word there dark sayings is the word riddle. Where you have chida in the Hebrew. Chida. It means something that have questions that you need to resolve. Something that has questions that you need to resolve. So just, you know, just like we had Abraham believed God. We had to resolve what that believing was. Okay? Now, what did he believe? We had to settle that. So the Old Testament is such written that you need to resolve things that were said in there. Why? Because all the things that were said in the Old Testament were dark sayings. They were chida, dark sayings. We have done several teachings on this. For example, Matthew 13, 34. Hear what Jesus said about the Old Testament. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables. And without a parable, speaking not unto them. Jesus himself used parables for the same purpose. Dark sayings. Look at verse 35 of Matthew 13. Matthew 13, 35. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of of the world so things were kept secret that's why it's riddles that must be resolved that's why the old testament must be explained so the mode of communication in the old testament was such that you will need to unravel what was said or what was done so when you take the old testament you cannot take it from face value you must put everything together to know what he is talking about. For example, what we are talking about this time around is the issue of tithe. Tithe, tithing. I'm not just excited about teaching, you know. <laughs> I'm not excited about teaching the subject of tithe. Because brother Paul never mentioned tithe by mistake. The entire Pauline theology does not have a mention of the word tithe. Not even by accident. Not even something that looks like it. You won't even say anything like tie. Before you can add it. <laughs> you know. But we have to teach it because people have to be helped. Because it's been a big monster in the body of Christ. 
And every time I come and ask the counselor, what about tight? What does the Bible say about tight? Is it true that if we don't pay tight, we're under a cause? And once you don't have clarity and you keep thinking that if you don't pay tight, you're under a cause, there will be doubt in your mind. You will not have the confidence that you require to stand before God. And the devil could take advantage of that and rob you of all your benefits as a child of God. So that subject is important. I know that a lot of pastors, they are, you know, they are shaking, they are trembling because they don't want me to talk about tight. But if you are a pastor watching, it will do you the uttermost good of your life and ministry to patiently follow through the process. I'm not looking for how to stop people from giving you money. I'm actually looking for how to help get people to give you more money so you can do the work of God. But however, it has to be done the right way because you can never get truth out of a lie. That's why we've got to study the scriptures rightly in the light of Christ. All right? <clears throat> the subject of tithing. In the epistles, the word tithe is just mentioned in one chapter. In the entire epistles, the word tithe is just mentioned in one chapter. And then Jesus mentions tithe twice. Jesus mentions tithe twice. What a vital subject. Very vital that Jesus mentioned it only twice. And in the entire epistles, it only appears once. That must be some big subject. It is such a major thing in the body of Christ. Some of the pastors that don't like me is simply because of my stance on tight. They like every other thing about me. But they don't like me because of tight. What a major issue. That it will even make pastors not want to relate with me because of tight. As if tight paid for anybody's sins. Now, <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 7 verse 4. Let's begin the journey. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 7 verse number 4. Now consider how great this man unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tent of the spoils. So what is tight? Before we get into what is tight, whenever you hear the word patriarch, Abraham, or whenever you hear father Abraham, any moment you hear that, he is talking to the Jews. The moment you hear the patriarch Abraham, or you hear father Abraham, he's talking to the Jews because Abraham is not your father. Damina is my father. Okay? Okay? Abraham is not my father. But he is a father of the Jews. So when you hear father Abraham or the patriarch, just know he is communicating to the Jews. Then he says a tent, a tent. Look at Hebrews chapter 7 verse 2, please pay attention. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 2. To whom also Abraham gave a tent part of all. First, being in being by interpretation king of righteousness. And after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Look at verse 9. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 9. And as I may so say, Levi also, who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. Look at verse 8. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 8. Follow the, the reading. And here men that die receive tithes. But there he received them of whom it is witness that he lived. Now the word tithe is the, is the word dikati. Dikati. D-E-K-A-T-E. Dikati. It means a tent. And that word dikati is used four times. Four times. A tent. A tent of what? We will see. Then we have Matthew 23, 23. Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. Woe, what a good way to start a statement. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, hypocrites. For you pay tithe of mint and anise. Underline those three words, mint and you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin. That's Jesus talking. You pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin. 
and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. So tithe is of the law. But a genial subject of the law. There are weightier matters of the law than tithe. This is from Jesus himself. You have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Which is judgment, mercy and faith. This ought you to have done and not to leave the order undone. And Jesus you know, that statement was referenced in Luke eleven forty two. It was referenced by Luke in Luke eleven forty two, where Jesus also mentions it. Because I told you Jesus mentions it twice. Okay? Now, the second one Jesus mentions is in Luke 18, 12. Luke chapter 18, verse number 12. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I... I possess. I give tithe of all that I possess. What a CV. I fast twice. I give tithe of all. Now, there's another word I want us to examine. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 5. Hebrews chapter 7 verse number 5. And verily, they, they that are of the sons of Levi, who received the office of the priesthood have the commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law. To take tithes of the people according to the law. That is of their brethren though they come out of the loins of Abraham. Now that word for them to take is the word apodekatu. Apodekatu. A P O. D E K A T double O A P O D E K A T double O is the same word in Hebrew 7 5. Now I'm separating the words for you. So I gave you the word tithe, which is tenth, used four times as decati. Now don't mix them together because the word apodicatu means to take off. To take off off to take off which either refers to those who gave it or to those who took it that word refers to those who gave it or to those who took it please those words are very fundamental please pay attention to them but it's actually in this context those who gave it to take off which is actually to take off what you have. To take off what you have. So the word is actually from the katu. The katu. D-E-K-A-T-O-O. Is to collect. To collect tight. To collect tight. So those who take off and those who collect. Look at Hebrews chapter 7 verse 6. Hebrews Chapter 7, verse 6. But he whose descent is not counted from them, received tithes of Abraham, and blessed him that had the promises. And blessed him. Look at Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 9. And as I may so say, Levi also, who received tithes, received, paid tithes, in Abraham. The kato is used for either a creditor or a debtor. So Hebrews 7, 6. Receive tithes of Abraham to receive like a debtor or creditor. Hebrews 7, 9. One who pays the other one. One who pays the other one who receives. So we have two words. Those who gave it and those who receive, then the tent itself. The tent itself. There's the tithe itself. Then those who gave it, and those who receive it, or collect it. Why am I doing that? You will see why in a few minutes. Those who gave it, those who take it. That is what is given or taken, which is the tent. That which is given or taken, which is the tent. So there's a giving 
and a taking. So either way, we are dealing with the same concept. The word decati, which means a tent. Now let's look at a quick view of Matthew 23. Where Jesus began to spoke emphatically about the tithe. What is Jesus saying there specifically? Now listen carefully everybody. Look at me. You know, some people are funny. They say, Jesus there is commanding people to give tithe. Even Jesus said, you should pay tithe. Sometimes you just need prayer for some people's hypocrisy, deceitfulness, or illiteracy, whichever is not forgiving. You need prayer. It's either deceit or huh? hypocrisy, hypocrisy, or pure ignorance. And if you're ignorant, don't talk authoritative. Don't be authoritative when you're ignorant. Let people know you don't know. Don't speak like an authority. And if you're hypocritical, well, or deceitful, it's one of them. How can you say Jesus was commanding people to pay tithe in Matthew 23 when he started the statement with woe? Woe. He didn't even start with good morning. Woe. <laughs> Are we here? Now, was Jesus commanding anybody to give tithe? Remember, they were doing tithe before Jesus came. It was what they were doing before he came. That's why I say, woe unto you hypocrites. You are taking care of tithe, which is a lesser matter. And you are overlooking the weightier matters of the law. Woe unto you hypocrites. So it wasn't Jesus who brought the idea. It was their practice before Jesus arrived the scene. Are we still in the building? So, Matthew 23, the first thing Jesus did here should not be lost. He says, you have omitted the weightier matters. That should not be lost. You have omitted the weightier matters of the law. So, Jesus identified tithing as of the law. Jesus identified tithing as of the law the law. If you ignore that reality, you are plain dishonest. He, he just said weightier matters of the law. So now, let's go back to the pretext and see what brought about that discourse. Matthew 23 verse 2. <clears throat> Matthew 23 verse 2 saying the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Verse 3. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe. That observe and do. But do not ye after their works. For they say and do not. Next verse. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born. And lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Now, see how Jesus talks about these same people that he told them, whoa, in verse 23. He says, weightier matters of the law. What does he mean by that word weightier matters? That word weightier is the same term brother Paul used in Acts 20:29. 20, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous. That word weightier is the same word for grievous. Wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Not sparing the flock. Grievous wolves. Weightier wolves. It's not a nice word. Wolves. Weightier matter. Grievous matter. Look at Acts 25, 7. Let's see another use of that word, weightier. 25, 7. And when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood round about and laid many 
and grievous complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. All right, Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse ten. We are doing exegesis on weight here. Second Corinthians ten ten. For his later said they are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Weightier and powerful. First John chapter five verse three. First John chapter five verse three. For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. Grievous. They are not grievous. What did Jesus call the other stuff? He called it the grievous matters of the law. The grievous matters of the law. But the commandments of God are not grievous. But the law has grievous matters. Are we in the building? The commandments of God are not grievous. But the law has grievous matters. That is, it has grave consequence. So that terminology is a terminology used for either judgment or punishment or justice. Wait here. Grievous. For judgment, for punishment or justice. Grievous, something that has grave consequences. Grievous commandments. They have grave consequences. So he calls them weightier matters of the law. Jesus identifies tithing as belonging to what? The law. Of course, Hebrews chapter 7, where we read earlier, was given before the law. It was given before the law. Why do we know that it was before the law? Because it talked about Abraham. Abraham was before the law. Look at Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Romans chapter 5 verse 12. We will read to verse 14. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have seen next verse for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law nevertheless that reigned from adam to moses over them that had not seen after the similitude of adam's transgression who is the figure of him that was to come so if you mention abraham you can't be talking about the law Okay, I can prove further. Galatians chapter 3 verse 16. Galatians chapter 3 verse 16. Now, to Abraham and his seed, where the promise is made, he saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Next verse, pay attention. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God... In Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of non-effect. The law came after the promise of God to Abraham. The law came after the promise of God to Abraham. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 9 lets us know when the law was given. Hebrews 8 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Are you still in the building? So, Jesus and the writers of Hebrews... We are discussing two different kinds of tithes. Two different kinds of tithes. There is tithe of Abraham before the law. And Jesus talked about tithe under the law. Tithe which is a weightier, which is under the weightier matters of the law. The writer of Hebrews talked about tithe which Abraham gave before the law. So there are two kinds of tithes. Please 
pay attention, I beg you. There are two kinds of tithe. There is tithe before the law and there is tithe during the law. Because when Abraham gave tithe to Melchizedek, there was no law of Moses. Keep that somewhere because that's going to come handy. So either way, whether we are looking at Jesus or the writer of Hebrews, both of them made references to the Old Testament books. Number one, referred to Moses' seat. Matthew 23, 1. The Pharisees like to sit on Moses' seat. The Hebrew writer made references to Genesis 14. When Abraham gave tithe to Melchizedek. Alright? Jesus talked about Moses' seat. Hebrew talks about Abraham. Two kinds of tithing. So the two instances are either the law or the book of Genesis. So our study of tithing must therefore be within these books. If we're going to understand what it means. So let's look at the word tithe. Tithe. Titan, tight, tights, plural, titan. The word tight, you'll find it 12 times in the Old Testament. Tight is used 12 times in the Old Testament. The word tights, plural, is used 18 times in the Old Testament. 18 times. The word titan is used two times. Tithing is used twice. So we have two words used exclusively for what I just said. One of them is the word masar in the Hebrew. M-A-A-S-E-R. Masar. Or ma masra. M-A-A-S-A-R-A-H. Then the second word is the word asar. A-S-A-R. So we have Masar or Asar. That one is used lesser because it refers to take or receive off. In the first instance, you will find these words. Please get ready to write down. You will find these words in Deuteronomy 14.22. Deuteronomy 14.22. Nehemiah 10. 37 to 38. Nehemiah 10, 37 to 38. Deuteronomy 26, 12. Deuteronomy 26, 12. 1 Samuel 8, verse 15. 1 Samuel 8, verse 15 and 17. 1 Samuel 8, 15, and 17. Genesis 28, 22. Genesis 28, 22. So let's go to specifics. Specifics. Where do we find these words? In the entire scriptures. Look at me, everybody. Let me help you with Bible study. Because right now I want to do something. You need to draw four columns in your notebook. Column one, before the law. Column two, during the law. Column three, the four gospels. Column four, the epistles. Four columns. And I'm going to give you scriptures to fit into every column. So it's easy for you. So we have column one, column two, column three, column four. All right? Column 1, column 2, column 3, column 4. Column 1, before the law. Two references. Genesis 14, 17 to 20. Genesis 14, 17 to 20. Second reference. Genesis 28, 20 to 22. Genesis 28, 20 to 22. Write them down. We are going to read all of them. You know me. Okay, you know me when I'm doing justice to a subject, it is thorough. Okay, now column two. After the law was given. After the law was given. Leviticus 27, 30 to 34. Leviticus 27, 30 to 34. 
Numbers 18, 19 to 28. Numbers 18, 19 to 28. Deuteronomy 12, 1 to 19. Deuteronomy 12, 1 to 19. Deuteronomy 14, 22 to 29. Deuteronomy 14, 22 to 29. Deuteronomy 26, 12 to 13. Deuteronomy 26, 12 to 13. 1 Samuel chapter 8, 14 to 17. 1 Samuel chapter 8, 14 to 17. Amos chapter 4, 2 to 6. Amos chapter 4, verse 2 to 6. 2 Chronicles 29. 35. 2 Chronicles 29, 35. 2 Chronicles 31, 1 to 12. 2 Chronicles 31, 1 to 12. Nehemiah 10, 37 to 38. Nehemiah 10, 37 to 38. Nehemiah 12, 44. Nehemiah 12, 44. Nehemiah 13, verse 5 and 12. Nehemiah 13, verse 5 and 12. Then the star scripture. Malachi chapter 3, verse 7 to 10. <laughs> That's the star scripture. Malachi chapter 3, verse 7 to 10. Then in the four gospels, in the four gospels, Matthew 23, 23. Matthew 23, 23. Luke eleven forty two, Luke eleven forty two, Luke 18, 9 to 14. Luke 18, 9 to 14. Then in the epistles. In the epistles. Hebrews chapter 7, 1 to 17. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1 to 17. Now. Look at me, everybody. Are you with me on the same page? Without much ado, the tithe was always from food. That before we get into reading, you, you see the way I'm going, in, no scripture will escape me. So before we even start the journey, let me submit to you. The tithe was always from food, not money. The tithe was always from food. Every reference I gave you, the tithe was always from food. Tithe was never money. Never. Tithe in the law was always food. So, let's read. Under the law, Leviticus 27.30. Quickly, I need you brother on the computer to be in the spirit. Watch. And all the tithes of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the land, is the Lord. It is holy unto the Lord. So tithe will be from grain and from fruits. From grain and from fruits. Numbers 18.27. Numbers 18.27. And this your heave offering shall be reckoned unto you as though it were the corn of the threshing floor. Corn. And as the fullness of the wine press. Wine press. 28. Thus you shall, also shall offer an heave offering unto the Lord of all your tithes which you receive of the children of Israel, and you shall give thereof the Lord's heave offering to Aaron the priest. So, fullness of the winepress, corn, grain, grain. Deuteronomy 12, 17 to 18. Deuteronomy 12, Thou mayest not eat within thy gates the tithe of thy corn, or of thy wine, or of thine oil, or the firstlings of thy herds, or of thy animal flock, nor any of thy vows which thou vowest, nor thy free will offerings or heave offering 
of thine hand. 18. But thou must eat them before the Lord thy God. In the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. Thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite that is within thy gates. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God in all that thou puttest thy hands unto. Deuteronomy 14.22 Deuteronomy 14.22 Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed, grain, that the field bringeth forth, yea by yea. 23 And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God. In the place which he shall choose to place his name there. The tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, of thine oil, corn, wine, oil, and the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flock, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God. So, what do you tithe from? Grain, new wine, oil. Deuteronomy 26, 12. Deuteronomy 26, 12. When thou hast made an end of tithing all the tithes of thine increase in the third year, which is the year of tithing, and has given it unto the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, that they may eat, that they may eat within thy gates and be filled. Listen carefully. Look at me, Roddy. If a pastor knows that you read your Bible diligently, he will be careful in what he says. Christians are very lazy. That's why pastors who don't want to be straightforward are getting away with things that are not scriptural. Pay attention. So don't be lazy. Read your Bible. Pray. Pray. Read your Bible. Pray. If you want Second Chronicles 31 5. Second Chronicles 31 5. And as soon as the commandment came abroad, the children of Israel brought in abundance the first fruit of what? Corn, wine, and oil, and honey. And of all the increase of the field, and the tithe of all things brought they in abundantly. Honey, grain, wine, oil, all produce of field, even oxen and sheep. Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 37. Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 37. And that we should bring the first fruit of our dough and our offerings and the fruit of all manner of trees, of wine and of oil unto the priest, to the chambers of the house of our God and the tithe of our ground unto the Levites. That the same Levites might have the tithe in all the cities of our tillage. Are you there? 38. And the priest, the son of Aaron, shall be with the Levites. When the Levites take tithe, and the Levites shall bring up the tithe of the tithes unto the house of our God, to the chambers, into the treasure house. Nehemiah 13 verse 5. Nehemiah chapter 13 verse 5. And he had prepared for him a great chamber. Where aforetime they laid the meat offering, meat offering, the frankincense and the vessels and the tithes of the corn, the new wine and the oil, which was commanded to be given to the Levites and the singers and the porters and the offerings of the priest. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Bring ye all on the line all because i will do some work there bring you all the tithes into the storehouse into where the storehouse that there may be what meat 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 means food that there may be food because tithe is food in my house and prove me now here with say of the lord of hosts if i will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall be no room enough to receive it. Meat means food. So again, food. Are we clear? If we're clear, say I hear you. Anybody that sees this and says otherwise is very dishonest. Pay attention. That's why I'm painstakingly reading with you. What about Jesus? What did Jesus say was tight? Matthew 23. 
Matthew 23, 23. That's the second column. I mean the third column, which is four gospels. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint, underline mint, and anise, underline anise, and cumin, underline cumin. Those are the things you pay tithe. And this is Jesus talking to those people. What is mint? The word mint there is not Nigerian minting company. It's only a dubious pastor that will tell you mint there means mint money. That's dubious. The word mint there is the, the Greek word hippos, hipposon. H-E-P-E-U-O-S H-E-P-E-U-O-S O-U-O It means peppermint that is used to cook. Peppermint. Okay? That is used to cook. Herbs. Herbs. Okay? So Jesus said the tithe will come from herbs. Number two. Anise. Anise is herbs. Okay? Number three. Cumin. Is a Greek word. Cuminon. K-U-M-I-N-O-N. Spice. Food like curry. Curry. So you tithe from curry and from herbs. This is Jesus who is God talking. If you are with me, say I hear you. So you discover the Old Testament and the four gospels agree that tithe is from food. Why will it be the same? Because Jesus called it a matter of the law. So that's why we read from Exodus down to the gospel. All of them agree that this is law, food. So it cannot be different. That means the tithe in the law and the tithe in the four gospels refers to what? Food. Okay? So tithe are in two categories as we have seen so far. We have food and animals. Let's see Leviticus 27 verse 30. Leviticus chapter 27 verse 30. Please you have to be patient with me. I'm taking extra time and I'll be taking extra time within the week because I want to teach this tight. After this series, I won't teach tight again. Till Jesus comes. If you ask for tight, I will just carry it and say, go and listen. Because that's not the gospel. But that is a doctrine that people must understand. Is it clear? Okay. So that's why I'm taking time to go through all this. Leviticus 27 verse 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord. It is holy unto the Lord. Verse 32. 27, 32. And concerning the tithe of the herd or of the flock, even of whatsoever passeth under the rod, the tent shall be holy unto the Lord. That's the first mention. The law of first mention under the law says, tithe will be food and animals. Then some people will say, listen everybody. Some people, some pastors will say, the reason why the tithe is food was because there was no money at that time. So people were asked to give food. But today, since there's money, instead of food, bring money. Fraud. Let me prove to you that there was money before the tithe. Are you ready? Because we're going to look at scriptures now. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that I'm teaching you so you can teach others. Okay? So I've got some news for you. In Genesis alone, the word money was used 32 times. In the book of Genesis alone, the word money was used 32 times. You know, the first time we read about the tithe under the law is Leviticus. But in Genesis, they were already using money and the word was used 32 times. Now, before Leviticus 27, before Leviticus 27, the, mo the word money was used 48 times. Before Leviticus 27, the word money was used 48 times. In Genesis, the word money was used 32 times. When the law was given, before the law of tithing, in Leviticus 27, 
money was used 48 times. So it's not a point that there was no money in the Old Testament. That is why people gave food. Money was mentioned 117 times in the Old Testament. 117 times. And of course, money is mentioned in the four Gospels. Let's see some references. Genesis 17, 12. <clears throat> Genesis 17, 12. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generation, he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. Next verse. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. So money was used to buy slaves. Genesis 23 verse 9. Genesis 23 verse 9. That he may give me the curve of Machpelah, which he had, which is in the end of his field, for as much money as it is worth, he shall give it me for a possession of a burying place amongst you. So money was used to buy land. Exodus 21, 1 to 11. You can read at home. Money was used to purchase freedom. Look at that Exodus 21, verse 2. Let me read two verses. Verse 2. If thou buy an Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve, and in the seventh year he shall go out free for nothing. Look at verse 11. 21, 11. And if he do not this three unto her, then shall she go out free without money. Exodus 22, 1 to 15. Exodus 22, 1 to 15. Money was used to pay court fines. Look at verse 7. Exodus 22, verse 7 because of time. If a man shall deliver unto his neighbor money or stuff to keep, and it be stolen out of the man's house, if the thief be found, let him pay double. Exodus 30, 11. To 16. Exodus 30, 11 to 16. Give me Exodus 30, 16 for time. Exodus 30, verse 16. And thou shalt take the atonement money of the children of Israel and shall appoint it for the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. All right. So money was used to be given in exchange for things. Look at Leviticus 27, verse 1 to 8. Money was used for vows because of time. Money was used for vows. Numbers chapter 3, verse 46 to 51. Numbers chapter 3, verse 46 to 51. Write down, you take care of it at home. You read it at home. Then Deuteronomy 14, 26. Deuteronomy 14, 26. Then Deuteronomy 22, 29. Money was used for dowry. Dowry for marriage. Dowry. So money was used in those days and money was not tight. Tight was food. Even though there was money, people were asked to bring food as tight under the law. If it's getting clear, can I have a good amen? Now, one instance where money, you know, replaced food was Genesis 47. Genesis 47. Pay attention. Genesis 47, 15. Put it up. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread. For why should we die in thy presence? For the money faileth. Next verse. And Joseph said, Give me your cattle and I will give you for your cattle if money fail. Next verse. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph. And Joseph gave them bread in exchange. So there was devaluation of currency. And they got into trade by butter. Where people give money. And where people exchange money for food. Are we in the building? Now, pay attention. That was because there was no more money. That in Genesis 47. This was the only time. Where money was replaced with food in the Old Testament. The only time. But food never replaced money. But money was replaced with food. But food never replaced money. Where else? 
Moses also used money to tax the Jews. Moses, he used money to tax the Jews. Second Chronicles 24, 5 to 6. Second Chronicles 24, 5 to 6. A tax imposed by Moses. Then Second Kings chapter 12, verse 4. Second Kings chapter 12, verse 4. Then Second Kings chapter 12, verse 5 to 12. Money was used to repair things. To repair things. Second Kings 12, 16. So we had money and we had tithe. And the tithe was not money. Someone says, well, the reason why it's like that is because the occupation of the Jews was farming. So since they were farmers, that is why they were to bring food. If they were doctors, lawyers, they would have asked them to bring money. Fraud. They were not all farmers. Let's see as I round up this service for the next one, whether farming was the Adamic profession. Genesis 40 verse 2. Are you in the building? And Pharaoh was wrought against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers, so there was a profession for butlers. Chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. So they were bakers and they were butlers. They were not farmers. Jeremiah 37, 21. We're going to take care of all concerns. Jeremiah 37, 21. Then Zedekiah the king commanded that they should commit Jeremiah into the court of the prison. And that they should give him daily a piece of bread out of the baker's street. Until all the bread in the city were spent. Thus Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. So they were bakers among the Jews. First Samuel 8, 13. First Samuel 8, 13. And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries and to be cooks and to be bakers. So they were confectionaries, they were cooks and they were bakers. They were not all farmers. Yet the tithe was farm produce. Deuteronomy 15, 2. Deuteronomy 15, 2. And this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lendeth out unto his neighbor shall release it. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother because it is called the law's release. These were bankers, people that lend money. They were bankers. They were cooks. They were bakers. They were butlers. Are we settling that matter? Eh? Matthew 25, 27. Jesus said, you will have given my money to the exchangers. At my coming, it will have profit. So there were bankers among the Jews. We even had ambassadors. In 1 Kings 5, 1. They were ambassadors. All these are professions among the Jews. Numbers chapter 20, verse 14. For your, for your reading at home. They were cooks also, like we saw. 1 Samuel 8, 13. There were cooks. We have soldiers. There were also soldiers. Luke chapter 3, verse 14. There were soldiers. There were those who were to repair the temple. We even have fishermen among the Jews. We are tent makers. Acts 18, 3. There were tent makers. There were fishermen. We even have carpenters. They had carpenters. Isaiah 44, 13. Carpenters. Jesus was also a carpenter. Mark chapter 6, verse 3. Among the Jews, we had different professions. There was money, yet the tithe was food. There were musicians, entertainers through music. There were beauticians among them. Jewish people whose work was to beautify others. So they were not all farmers. Now we have said on column two, the tithe was primarily food, livestock, 
And Jesus explained the tithe as similar to what the Old Testament explained. In the next service, we shall look at column 1 and column 4, which is Genesis 14 and Hebrews 7. Have we settled tithing under the law and in the Gospels? What was used? What was used? Is it because there was no money? Is it because they were all farmers? So the tithe was primarily food under the law. Okay? Is it clear? If it's clear, can I see you wave your hand? Okay? Because the job of a pastor is to bring clarity to the written word of God. And as a workman that I need not to be ashamed. I have to rightly divide the word of truth. So that nobody will do you like this in the name of tithe under my oversight. So we are laying foundation. I will continue the foundation in the next service. And in the next service, I will give you historical documents that prove that Titan did not start with Abraham. It's not a concept of Abraham. And I will show you where Abraham got it from. Stand on your feet. Kabayada. Bajogodo. Membro Gada. Let's pray in tongues for a few minutes. Understanding is coming. Revelation is increasing. Lego Zobi na Kalano Gongro do Zokele Nema. Agoro do Zakaline Mengre ne Kele Nemo. Agabo Jokolo do Boro Kotome Sekila na Manga. Egebo Zoko. Agara Tosokole de Baba. Angebo Jakaya. Thank you, Father. Lift your right hands to heaven, Father. We rejoice that every day your word is building us up, equipping us. Giving us all that we need to be able to confidently communicate the revelation of the gospel of Christ. And build the people of God on the truth that is in Jesus. I pray that this revelation grows. And I pray above all that Jesus be made manifest. And that the purpose of Christ be fulfilled. I decree that everyone under the sound of my voice becomes a workman. That needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. I decree that right now every need in your life is met supernatural. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Barriers are terminated. Whatever is not planted by God is rooted out. Bodies and yokes are destroyed. In the name of Jesus. We rebuke sickness. We rebuke disease. Satan, get your hands off. In the name of Jesus. And I decree that as you continue to grow. You become an able minister of the New Testament. Not of the later that kill it. But of the spirit that give it life. Father we rejoice that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Has set us free. From the law of sin and death. And we stand fast in the liberty. Wherewith Christ has set us free. Thank you for the blessing in this service this morning. In Jesus precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. Can I have some celebration of joy in this building? This morning? When you hear the word, you rejoice. Can we rejoice this morning? Glory! 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 Amen. Oh, I tell you. You don't want to miss the next service. You don't want to miss the next service. And you don't want to miss tomorrow till next Sunday. Every evening, 6 p.m., GMT plus one. I will be laying them precept upon precept until Saturday. Then Sunday morning, we finish the remaining part 9 and 10. Amen. Amen. So that when people say tight, you tell them, are you ready? <laughs> Sit down. Take your pen. <laughs> Let's go to school. <laughs> you take them step by step until it is clear. Amen. Grab a good offering, let's give this morning. We give in faith, we give in honor, we give with joy. Every time you are taught the word of God in this house, we honor the word of God by our givings. Our givings shows that we value the word. It shows that we are worthy of the word. You know, it says, into whatsoever house you enter, if that house be worthy of you. Alright, so I have entered your house this morning with the good news. And if 
you are worthy of the good news I have brought. Let the blessing remain. What is the proof that you are worthy? By giving honor to the word you have just heard. Can I have a good amen? amen. So grab a good offering. If you are watching online like I always teach, you have got to be responsible to the word. You also want to give this morning with joy. And you want to give in honor of Christ and in honor of the labor of the teaching of God's word. The banking details are online. The banking details are on television. And the radio audience, Mr. Michael Bush, will read the banking details for you. Always a joy to serve you the grace of God. Lift your offerings up. Let's pray. Father, we rejoice that we have the privilege to honor your word. We honor your word in faith. We honor your word with joy. And we ask that as we continue to study your word, everyone giving this morning the blessing that comes with the teaching of the word resides and abides with them in the name of Jesus. Every need is met. Every need is met. My God supplies all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the blessing. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. Now, just before we sign up, I heard that one pastor got angry when he saw the flyer of Titan Titan. Okay, got angry and said, what is that mean I'm looking for? I thought the message is Jesus. I thought the message is Jesus. Has the message now become tight? <laughs> My friend said, he told him, why don't you come down and follow? Are you guilty of something? Why don't you come down and follow? Hear what he will say first. Why do you want to crucify the man? Before you even hear what he wants to say. Is tight not in the Bible? Is tight not? Why don't you wait? Don't be throwing tantrums. Don't be throwing tantrums. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Let's study. Amen. Have I said anything this morning? Have we concluded? Have we concluded? What did we do? We are still laying... We have not said don't tight. We have not said tight. We are just saying tight was. So if a pastor is crazy about tight, what do you give him? Are we in the building? That's where we stopped. We just pause. In the next service, we remove the pause. Jacobada. We love you guys. Looking forward to seeing you at 11 a.m. GMT plus one. Invite more people to be part of this exciting study. Let's free people from the bondage. Let's free people from all of these wrong teachings that have kept many people in bondage and has even made many people not to like church. It has made many people not to be interested in your God. Your God that likes to collect and collect even from those who don't have by force. You know, and that's a wrong representation of my father. And it's our job to clarify things so that our father's true character can be made manifest. We love you guys. And until we see you then, enjoy the grace of Christ. Let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service this morning. Glory! We Amen! You have been blessed by this message. For these, all the messages and books by Dr. Abel Damino, please call plus 234-806-800-9939. Or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.